Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Y'all, there is nothing better than the smell of homemade bread baking and cooking in the oven. And there's nothing better to go with the homemade bread than homemade apple butter. I'm going to be sharing both of those recipes with you guys today. Homemade from scratch. Let's get to cooking. I've got everything sitting out here to make my milk and honey bread. Don't forget, I will have this recipe linked down below for you guys. I've been making this for a few years now and it is so, so good. I'm so happy that I finally created a bread recipe that is delicious. So let me show you how I put it together. I have shared this a couple of times on my channel, but it has been a while and since I have revised it and it kind of made some changes. So I am making mine in my bread machine. That's how I make all my bread. It's super, super easy. If you've never thought about getting a bread machine, I highly recommend. You can normally get them on Amazon. I'll have one linked in my storefront for you guys if you're interested. This mine came from my mom and she got it from who knows and it's been it's 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 been a while. It's been around a while. Um, but it's still kicking. So the recipe and the way I'm going to show you guys today is how to do it in the bread machine. Let me show you how to put this together. You're going to need some water, some salt, some all-purpose flour. You're gonna need some honey. Um, my yeast, I buy mine from Sam's Club in bulk and I just um, keep what's not open in the freezer. And then what is open, I keep in mason jars in the fridge and it lasts forever, pretty much. <laughs> you also need some sugar, you need some milk, and you need some butter. So let me get it all set up and we'll mix it together. So before we get everything mixed in the bread machine, we've got to activate our yeast. So we're gonna take and add our water. Our milk. Now I'm adding in hot water because you want your this liquid mixture to add in your yeast and your sugar for it to bloom. You want it to be at least anywhere from 110 to 120. No more than 120 because it will kill your yeast. Um, so as you see, I'm still under 100. So I'm gonna take and pop mine in the microwave for a couple seconds just to heat it up. Like I said, anywhere from 110 to 120. Okay, it is at 115. So now we're gonna add in our sugar. The sugar is what's gonna help activate your yeast and help it bloom. It has to have some sort of a sweetness to feed it. And then we're gonna add in our yeast. If you are using packets of yeast um, instead of like, you know, these, <laughs> then it's gonna be two packets of yeast. Give it a stir. And then we're going to set a timer for 10 minutes and let it bloom. While that is back there blooming and it's already started, I am going to go ahead and add in half of my flour to the bottom of my mixer. Or, yeah, it mixes it. My bread machine, I'm going to add half. And then I'm going to add in um, either melted and cooled butter or softened butter. Add that in there. And then we're going to add in our honey makes a world of difference y'all it is so good and that's what gives it its name milk and honey bread <laughs> Put that in there and so this is good to go whenever this is done when the timer goes off we will add it in and then we will top with the rest of our flour 
and our salt. You don't want to put the salt in with the yeast because it could kill it. Okay, we got that in there still. Our yeast is ready to go. So we're gonna dump this mixture in. It got all bubbly and delicious. And then we're just gonna add the remaining of the flour on top and our salt. And I like to try to add the flour where it coats the top and doesn't have the yeast coming through. So that way I can add the salt and it not, like I said, it not kill the yeast. Okay, I got it in there. Excuse the messiness, y'all. It's well used, like I said. So mine has several different options. I know it's hard to see if it's dark in here, but there's several different options. So for me, I personally like to do the dough in here and then I bake it in the oven because you get full loaves. So I like to set mine on eight because that's the dough setting. So we're gonna get it going and then I'll come back when it's time to take it out and form our loaf. My timer just went off for my bread. It is ready to go. So I have got my Wilton loaf pan. This is the long sandwich loaf. This is the one I prefer to use, but if you don't have it, this does make two like regular smaller loaves. Like I said, I really like making it in this. I will have a, um, a link for this in my Amazon storefront if you're interested. I highly recommend, I love. They do come in a two pack, so you get two of these. So I've already greased it. We're gonna get a little bit of flour out and then we're gonna roll it up and get it in there. Um, whenever you put it in here, you're gonna cover it with a clean towel, dish towel, and just push it to the side and let it sit and let it about double into size. I'm gonna time it for you guys because I'm not sure how long it's gonna take, but I am gonna time it this time so that way I can kind of give you an idea. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of flour down. I just cleaned my counter, dried it off. Just washed my hands. You don't need much, just a little bit. And then we're gonna add it in here. Now this recipe, now today I'm sharing it as a loaf for you guys. But I have made this recipe as rolls, and y'all, they are amazing. Um, I wanted to do this for bread for this time, but I will be sharing the rolls in the future. Um, just the technique on how to get them, you know, on like the process of from here, how to make them into rolls. But today we're just gonna do bread, but they are so, so good as rolls, I'm telling y'all. <laughs> so it's just a little bit sticky. You can get a little bit of flour on there. You don't want too much, because it'll make your make your dough dense. So what I like to do is just press it out a little bit. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start, go from one end, start pulling and rolling. And that's gonna shape your now with doing it in the bread machine, it's already went through the whole kneading cycle and all the first rise and all that. So for me, I don't have to worry about kneading it and everything. So the process for me, pulling it out of the bread machine, I'm just taking, rolling it up, put it in, we're gonna put it in here, and then we're gonna cover it with a towel and let it sit until it doubles in size. So, got it rolled out. Now make sure when you're putting it in your pan, to put it seam side down, because there is gonna be a seam there. And then I like to fold my, my ends in. 
because there's also a seam there, and then get it put in the pan. Then we're gonna get us a clean towel. Make sure it's a clean one. Don't use a dirty one, that's gross. I'm just gonna cover it and let it sit. And like I said, I'm gonna time it for you guys this time because I'm not sure how long it normally takes. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. That's how long it ended up taking. And it is ready to go in the oven. I have my oven preheated at 375. I preheated it whenever it started um, rising up. So that way it's nice and warm and ready to go. Let's get it put in the oven. It is done. Oh, it smells so good in here. There's nothing like some homemade bread. <laughs> the smell of homemade bread. So you want it to be anywhere from 190 to about 200 when it is ready to go. So it is 209, so it's ready to go. It ended up taking 35 minutes to bake, so at 375. So what I like to do is I'm going to take it out of this pan so that way it doesn't carry over cook because this is hot. I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna put a towel over it and as it cools, I've tested this before and when I don't cover it with a towel when it's hot, it dries out easier. So I've noticed that if I cover it with a towel and let it completely cool with the towel on it, it holds in the moisture and it makes it super, super soft bread. So let's cover it up. Well, let's take it out and get it covered. Y'all, we have already ate about half this loaf. <laughs> the boys came home from work. I sliced some up and they all killed it. This is so, so good. So now next, I'm gonna share how I make my homemade apple butter. I did can mine. I will not show you the canning process, but I'll have a couple videos linked of showing you how to water bath can. It is so easy, but y'all, it is delicious. So, so good, y'all. So I'm doing a recipe and a half. I've got five pounds of apples there. The recipe that will be linked down below is three pounds. But of course you can double it, triple it, quadruple it. <laughs> I have just washed and peeled them. Now I'm gonna cut them as close to the core as I can. You don't wanna waste any of that delicious apple. Slicing them up and I'm just gonna get them all in the crock pot. Now that I've got them all in there, I'm glad I didn't do a full double batch because I definitely wouldn't have had enough room. You're going to add in your spices. I like to add in some cinnamon and some pumpkin pie spice. I really like the flavor that the pumpkin pie spice gives. Um, if you don't have it, you can use what's equal to pumpkin pie spice um, or just omit it and just do cinnamon. It's totally up to you. Don't forget that I will have this recipe linked down below for you guys so you can get exact measurements and everything. But doing this in your crock pot, you just dump everything in sit it you have to stir it occasionally but that's it and y'all it is delicious you're also going to add in some brown sugar and some regular sugar as well as some apple juice you're just going to give everything a good stir and then you're going to cook it low and slow for about eight to ten hours and just until it literally turns to mush Here is a few hours in, I'm just giving it a stir, making sure the apples are all cooking evenly and everything's coated in that sugary goodness. And then I put the lid on it and stir it again in the next couple hours. I stir it a few times throughout this process. Like I said, it just kind of helps with the overall cook. And I can kind of keep an eye on it and see how much longer it has. But all in all, it normally takes about a good, a good eight hours to cook them down. Once it is cooked down to pretty much nothing, 
the apples just pretty much turn to mush you're going to go ahead and blend it up i like to use my immersion blender just because it is super easy i will have one linked in my amazon storefront for you guys it is a must-have kitchen appliance i feel like or kitchen equipment whatever you want to call it uh kitchen gadget that's what we'll say but i just take and blend it up until it's smooth and there's no more chunks and it is just so smooth and delicious it is so good on the homemade bread or homemade biscuits or even canned biscuits oh, it is just so good here is what it looks like when it is all smooth it is the perfect consistency perfect texture y'all it is so so delicious you definitely have to give this one a try and i did can it um i will have a video linked down below kind of an idea of how to water bath can or pressure can whatever you do i'm not going to be sharing that process with you guys um, but i did water bath can mine and i ended up getting i think four yeah i got four pints out of that batch and a half so that kind of gives you an idea of how much if you you know need to know how much to make um and then if you don't can it then you can freeze it if you want to or you can just put it in a jar and put it in your fridge for probably a few weeks i would say it would last a few weeks in your fridge and that's it guys that wraps up today's video i really hope you enjoyed these two super easy and delicious homemade from scratch recipes homemade bread and homemade apple butter are a match made in heaven. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.